The first thing that we need to talk about before any hardware replacement procedure is the hardware addressing within an ML6000 library. It is very important to understand how to discern where in the library a faulty piece of hardware is located so that when replacing it, you are replacing the proper one. To begin, please understand that there are many different configurations that a Dell ML6000 can take. Starting with a single control unit that is 5U in height and adding anywhere from 1 to 4 expansion units that are each 9U in height. These expansions can be arranged either below the control unit or both above and below the control unit, but never only above the control unit. The position of each unit determines its hardware address, with the control unit always being address number 0. Negative numbers are always below the control unit, starting with number negative 1 being right below the control unit and working away. Positive numbers are always above the control unit, starting with number 1 right above the control unit and also working away. In this fashion, if you are ever dealing with the front of the library and an error for a main access door or an IE station lock assembly, it will always give a single digit hardware address in the error. This single digit address will correspond to one of the units in the library configuration and is often where the fault will be. Similarly, in the rear of the library, the addressing is much the same. The only difference is that it is a two digit hardware address instead of a single digit hardware address. This is because for all rear replaceable components, there are multiple locations in each unit that the component could be. So for a two digit hardware address, the first digit is always the unit of the library that the piece of hardware is in, and the second digit is the number of the component within that unit. So for tape drives, the control unit can contain up to two tape drives, and each expansion can contain up to four additional drives. The drives are always numbered from the top down in each unit of the library. Thus, a control unit will have drives numbered 1 and 2 from the top down, and any expansion will have drives numbered 1 through 4 from the top down. This number is the second number of the hardware address of the drive, with the first number being the unit of the library the drive is in. For power supplies in the library, there are two supplies for each unit in the library, and they are redundant. Power supply number one is always the left supply in each unit when looking at it from the back, and power supply number two is always the right supply in each unit. This will be, again, the second digit of the hardware address for the supply, while the first digit is the unit of the library that the power supply is in. Fiber channel blades and fans work very similar, with the exception that they can only be contained in expansions, not the control unit. Just like the drives, they are numbered from the top down, and each expansion has room for up to two sets of fiber and fan blades. Just like the drives and power supplies, the number within the expansion, in this case either 1 or 2, will be the second digit of the hardware address, while the first digit is the unit of the library that they are contained in. If you have any questions regarding hardware addressing while watching this video, please feel free to refer back to this diagram at any time. Please note, this replacement cannot be done while the tape library is still in the rack. You will need to remove the library from the rack to complete the replacement. When we get to the point in the video where we state that the library needs to be removed from the rack, we strongly suggest that you either use a server lift or have multiple people present to help remove this library from the rack for safety reasons. Today, we will be showing you how to replace a control unit chassis on a Dell ML6000 tape library. Please note, the library will need to be powered down for this replacement. You will need to schedule downtime with the system administrator before powering down the tape library. Please also note, under no circumstances should you move the control card or compact flash from the old control unit to the replacement control unit, as this may cause irreparable failure to the replacement unit. At this point, you have very likely come to the conclusion that you need a replacement control unit because you have replaced other components within that control unit and they have not fixed your errors. The first thing that needs to be done is to check the licensing on your machine. The licensing for any ML6000 control unit can be checked using the link in the description below to the Dell website. The two pieces of information you will need are your library service tag and library serial number. To obtain these pieces of information, Use the web GUI to navigate the library information window, which will show both the service tag and the serial number of your machine. Alternatively, they can be found on the physical machine itself. The service tag will usually be located on a sticker on the back of the machine. The serial number is located on the barcode inside the machine, which you will need to open the main access door to see. 
If you need to buy a replacement control chassis for the ML6000 tape library, please check your licensing on the defective unit first. We only offer 41 slot base configured machines on the Rocket Platform website to be guaranteed in stock at all times. As there are so many license variations of the ML6000 tape library, if you need a chassis that has any additional features beyond the standard 41 slot base configuration, please reach out to us directly for pricing and availability. It is extremely important to note that licensing features may include things such as slot capacity, encryption, path failover, etc. If the replacement control unit you are going to install does not have these licenses already installed on it, then the control unit will not work in your existing environment properly. It is always best to double check the replacement unit with the Dell website link as well to ensure that the licensing is the same on both units. Prior to any work being done on the library, the system administrator needs to completely vacate all data and cleaning cartridges from the library. Also, they will need to get all of their unique configuration parameters from the library web GUI. These parameters may include, but are not limited to, network configuration, user account access configuration, partitioning information, dedicated cleaning slots, etc. So if that has not been done yet, please contact the system administrator to have this process completed before continuing with hardware replacement. Now, if you do not have any expansions attached to your control unit, keep watching from here. If you have expansions attached only below your control unit, please skip ahead to 11 minutes 40 seconds in this video. If you have expansions both above and below your control unit, please skip ahead to 19 minutes 28 seconds in this video. The first thing you will need to do is power off the library once you have gotten approval from the administrator that downtime is ready and all tapes have been vacated from the machine. Hit the power button on the front of the library one time and wait for the library to power itself off. Once this is done, go around the back of the library and flip all of the power supplies in the control unit to the off position. At this point, before removing any hardware, Please label all tape drives and cables in the machine with their positions so that once the control module replacement is complete, you will be able to put everything back in its proper place. Next, you will need to remove all cables from the machine, followed by all of the tape drives and tape drive filler plates. Please put everything in a safe place nearby so that it will not get damaged while replacing the control module chassis. Once this is done, you will also need to remove both terminators from the library chassis. These are the silver connectors located on the left-hand side of the rear of the library. You will see a single terminator at the very top and another at the very bottom. To remove these, squeeze their clips gently and pull straight backwards to remove them. Set them aside to be reinstalled later. Undo the screws that secure the control unit to the rack mount kit and then remove the control unit from the rack and place it on a flat even surface so that you can work on it. Now you will remove the top cover of the library and then remove the picker assembly. The top cover is held on by four Phillips head screws, two in the front and two in the rear. Once you have the top cover off, you can now remove the picker. With the top cover off, you will be able to look down inside and see the picker assembly. You can reach down and gently start pulling it upwards until it is at the top of the machine. At this point, you can remove it from the tracks, being careful not to rip the picker cable that is still attached. You will now use a Torx size 10 screwdriver to undo the silver screw connecting the picker cable to the picker. Once this screw is undone, you can remove the picker cable carefully and let it retract back into the control unit and set the picker to the side. Now you will need to check the replacement control unit for the bottom panel. Your replacement unit very likely will already have this panel installed. However, if it does not, you will need to use a Torx size 10 screwdriver to remove the screws holding it to the bottom of the defective control unit. You can then move the plate over to the replacement and screw it back down. Please note, it is very important that you do not remove the black plastic bumper from the bottom plate. This bumper is how the picker homes itself to the bottom of the library, and without it, the picker will not be able to home itself and could also become damaged. Once you have the replacement control unit ready to go, you are ready to reinstall the picker assembly. To install the picker, first connect the picker cable to the rear connector. Then, carefully line up the front and back wheels with the guide channels going down the tracks. Lower the picker carefully, ensuring that it is level front to back. To be sure that this is the case, compare the positioning of the topmost wheel of the picker assembly with the top edge of the track, both front and rear. What you want is for the top edge of the wheel to be even with the top edge of the track for both the front and back tracks simultaneously. 
If one wheel is either a bit above or below the edge of the track, you will need to pull the picker out and try again. This may take a couple of attempts, even for those experienced in replacing these assemblies. Please do not get discouraged, just take your time. Now you can replace the top cover of the library, making sure to tighten down all four Phillips screws securely. Then carefully slide the control unit back into the rack. Then install all tape drives or drive filler plates in their respective positions. Install the terminators, being sure that they are clipped and secure and that you do not bend the pins when installing them. Last, install all cables that you removed prior to working on the library. Flip all power supplies to the on position and then go around to the front of the library and press the power button and wait for the library to initialize. While the library is initializing, you will see the initial setup wizard. Please complete this wizard using the parameters that the administrator took from the old control unit prior to removing it. Then you must make sure that the library comes up clean without any errors. If there is an amber light below the operator panel after the library initializes, you will need to log in as an administrator and examine if they are related to the work that was just performed and clear them. If you have any questions in regards to examining and clearing RAS tickets, please see the link in the description below for our video about ML6000 RAS tickets. If you are having any difficulties after this, please open up a support ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. It will now be the responsibility of the administrator to set up the library settings from scratch using information they saved from the web GUI prior to powering off the original defective control unit. If you have expansions below your control unit, there are some extra steps that must be taken to complete the replacement. However, before any other steps are taken, you must first power off the library once you have gotten approval from the administrator that downtime is ready and all tapes have been vacated from the machine. Hit the power button on the front of the library one time and wait for the library to power itself off. Once this is done, go around the back of the library and flip all of the power supplies in the control unit and all expansions to the off position. At this point, before removing any hardware, please label all tape drives and cables in the machine with their positions so that once the control module replacement is complete, you will be able to put everything back in its proper place. Once everything is labeled, you will need to remove all cables from the machine, followed by all of the tape drives and tape drive bay filler plates. Please put everything in a safe place nearby so that it will not get damaged while replacing the control module chassis. Once this is done, you will also need to remove all of the terminators and chassis interconnect cables from the entire library. These are the silver connectors located on the left-hand side of the rear of the library. You will see a single terminator at the very top and another at the very bottom of the library. You will also see an interconnect cable between each chassis module in the library. To remove these, squeeze their clips gently and pull straight backwards to remove them. Set them to the side to be reinstalled later. Undo the screws that secure the library to the rack mount kit. Now you will need to remove the entire library as a single unit from the rack and put it on a flat level surface to work on it. Again, we strongly recommend using a server lift or having multiple people helping to do this for safety reasons as it is a very heavy machine. Once you have the machine out on a flat level surface, you will first need to remove the top cover and then remove the picker assembly. The top cover is held on by four Phillips head screws, two in the front and two in the rear. Once you have the top cover off, now you can remove the picker. The picker removal procedure will depend on the number of expansions you have below the control unit. If it is only one expansion, you will be able to just reach down inside and pull the picker up gently until it is at the top. If there are two or more expansions, you will need to open the main door on the front of all expansions as well as the control unit. To do this, first slide the IE stations of the expansions and control unit out. If they are locked, you will need to use the manual release for the IE stations. This can be found at the bottom of each individual IE station. It is a small hole that you can slide a thin screwdriver in and trip the release to unlock the IE station. Once all of the IE stations are slid out, you can pull open each main door. Once all main doors are open, you can reach inside and guide the picker upwards, feeding it through the expansions until you are able to reach it from the top of the control unit. At this point, you can remove it from the tracks, being careful not to rip the picker cable that is still attached. You will use a Torx size 10 screwdriver to undo the silver screw connecting the picker cable to the picker. Once the screw is undone, you can remove the picker cable carefully and let it retract back into the control unit and set the picker to the side. For the control unit removal, there are two main things you will need to do. The first of these is to raise the picker tracks, both front and back. 
The second is to undo the thumb screws holding the control unit to the expansion below it. First, to raise the tracks properly, we will start with the back of the unit. Upon looking inside the back of the unit, on the right hand side in front of the empty drive bays, you will see a black squeeze clip. Currently this is in the lowered position. In order to raise it, you will need to squeeze the clip while simultaneously raising the entire assembly upwards. This is the track itself being raised and will provide a bit of resistance as it is spring loaded. Once you have the track raised as far as it will go, while still keeping upward pressure to hold the track, release the top half of the squeeze clip. This will lock the track into place in the upward position and you can now release the upward pressure and the track will stay. The last thing you will do in the back of the library is undo the thumb screws holding the control unit to the expansion below it. These thumb screws are located just under the bottom most drive bay. Undo both thumb screws for the control unit. You are now ready to move to the front of the library. In order to access the picker tracks in the front of the control unit, you will need to open the main access door if you have not already done so when removing the picker. You will see the same type of black squeeze clip to the left of the main opening in the front of the control unit. Using the same method as before, raise the track so it is locked in place. Now you are ready to undo the thumb screws that are holding the front of the control unit to the expansion below it. They are located at the bottom of the control unit, below the main opening, and can only be accessed while the main access door is open. Undo both thumb screws for the control unit. Once this is complete, you will be able to remove the control unit from the expansions below it. Lift the control unit off of the expansions and put it to the side out of your way. Now that you have removed the defective control unit, you will replace it with the good one and then reinstall the picker. First, put the replacement control unit into place making sure it clicks in and is flush with the rest of the front of the library. Once it is sitting properly, tighten down the thumb screws in the front and back securing the control unit to the expansion below it. Then drop down both front and back picker tracks. Now you are ready to reinstall the picker. To install the picker, first connect the picker cable to the rear connector of the picker. Then carefully line up the front and back wheels with the guide channels going down the tracks. Lower the picker carefully, ensuring that it is level front to back. To be sure this is the case, compare the positioning of the topmost wheel of the picker assembly with the top edge of the track, both front and back. What you want is for the top edge of the wheel to be even with the top edge of the track for both front and back tracks simultaneously. If one wheel is either a bit above or a bit below the edge of the track, you will need to pull the picker out and try again. This may take a few attempts, even for those experienced in replacing this kind of assembly. Please don't get discouraged, just take your time. Now reinstall your top cover, making sure to tighten down all four Phillips screws completely. You are now ready to get the library unit back into the rack. For safety reasons, please use either a server lift or multiple people to help lift the unit back into the rack. Once it is back in the rack, please secure the unit into place using the four screws and the rack mount kit. Now install all tape drives and or drive bay filler plates in their respective positions. Install the terminators and interconnect cables, being sure that they are clipped and secure and that you do not bend the pins while installing them. Last, install all cables that you removed prior to working on the library. Flip all power supplies to the on position and then go around to the front of the library and press the power button and wait for the library to initialize. While the library is initializing, you will see the initial setup wizard. Please complete this wizard using the parameters the administrator took from the old control unit prior to removing it. Then you must make sure that the library comes up clean without any errors. If there is an amber light below the operator panel after the library initializes, you will need to log in as an administrator and examine if they are related to the work that was just performed and clear them. If you have any questions in regards to examining and clearing RAS tickets, please see the link in the description below for our video about ML6000 RAS tickets. If you are having any difficulties after this, please open up a support ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. It will now be the responsibility of the administrator to set up the library settings from scratch using the information they saved from the web GUI prior to powering off the original defective control unit. If you have expansions both above and below your control unit, there are some extra steps that must be taken to complete the replacement. However, before any of these steps are taken, the first thing you will need is to power off the library once you have gotten approval from the administrator that downtime is ready and all tapes have been vacated from the machine. Hit the power button on the front of the library one time and wait for the library to power itself off. Once this is done, go around the back of the library and flip all of the power supplies in the control unit and all expansions to the off position. 
At this point, before removing any hardware, please label all tape drives and cables in the machine with their positions, so that once the control module replacement is complete, you will be able to put everything back in its proper place. Once everything is labeled, you will need to remove all cables from the machine, followed by all of the tape drives and or tape drive filler plates. Please put everything in a safe place nearby so that it will not get damaged while replacing the control module chassis. Once this is done, you will also need to remove all of the terminators and chassis interconnect cables from the library. These are the silver connectors located on the left hand side of the rear of the library. You will see a single terminator at the very top and another at the very bottom of the library. You will also see an interconnect cable between each chassis module in the library. To remove these, squeeze their clips gently and pull straight backwards to remove them. Set them to the side to be reinstalled later. Undo the screws that secure the library to the rack mount kit. Now you will need to remove the entire library as a single unit from the rack and put it on a flat level surface to work on it. For safety reasons, we strongly recommend using either a server lift or having multiple people helping to do this as it is a very heavy machine. For all expansions above the control unit, there are two things that you will need to do. The first of these is to raise the picker tracks both front and rear. The second is to undo the thumb screws holding the expansion to the unit below it. To raise the tracks properly, first we will start with the back of the unit and you must start with the very topmost expansion. Upon looking inside the back of the unit on the right hand side in front of the empty drive bays, you will see a black squeeze clip. Currently this is in the lowered position. In order to raise it, you will need to squeeze the clip while simultaneously raising the entire assembly upwards. This is the track itself being raised and will provide a bit of resistance as it is spring loaded. Once you have the track raised as far as it will go, while still keeping upward pressure to hold the track, release the top half of the squeeze clip. This will lock the track into place in the upward position and you can release the upward pressure and the track will stay. While still in the back of the library, repeat this with all other expansions above the control unit and starting in order from top and working your way down to the control unit. The last thing you will do in the back of the library is to undo the thumb screws holding the expansions to the units below them. These thumb screws are located just under the bottom most tape drive bay. Undo both thumb screws for all expansions above the control unit. You are now ready to move to the front of the library. Just as before, you must start with the topmost expansion and work your way down. First, start with raising the picker tracks. In order to access the picker tracks, you will need to open the main access doors. To do this, you will first need to slide the IE stations out completely. If the IE stations are locked, you will need to use the manual release. This can be located at the bottom of each IE station. It is a small hole in which you can insert a thin screwdriver to trip the release and unlock the IE station. Once all IE stations are slid out, you can swing the main access doors open by gripping them and pulling towards you. They will swing open towards the left and you can open them fully and they should stay in place. You will now see the same type of black squeeze clips to the left of the main opening in the fronts of the expansions. Using the same method as before, raise the tracks so that they are locked in place. Repeat this, working your way down for every expansion above the control unit. Now you are ready to undo the thumb screws that are holding the front of the expansions to the units below them. They are located at the bottom of the expansion below the main opening and can only be accessed while the main access door is open. Undo all of the thumb screws for all expansions above the control unit. Once this is complete, you will be able to start removing the expansions one by one starting with the top. Lift the top expansion off and place it safely out of your way. Repeat this for every expansion down to the control unit you are now ready to remove the picker. The picker removal procedure will depend on the number of expansions you have below the control unit. If it is only one expansion, you will be able to just reach down inside and pull the picker up gently until it is at the top. If there are two or more expansions, you will need to open the main door on the front of all expansions and the control unit. To do this, first slide the IE station out of the expansion and control unit. If they are locked, you will need to use the manual release. This can be found at the bottom of each IE station. It is a small hole that you can slide a thin screwdriver in and trip the release to unlock the IE station. Once the IE stations are all slid out, you can pull each main door open. Once they are all open, you can reach inside and guide the picker upwards, feeding it through the expansions until you are able to reach it from the top of the control unit. At this point, you can remove it from the tracks, being careful not to rip the picker cable that is still attached. 
You will now use a Torx size 10 screwdriver to undo the silver screw connecting the picker cable to the picker. Once this screw is undone, you can remove the picker cable carefully and let it retract back into the control unit and set the picker kit to the side. For the control unit removal, there are two things that you will need to do. The first of these is to raise the picker tracks both front and rear. The second is to undo the thumb screws holding the control unit to the expansion below it. To raise the tracks properly, first we will start with the back of the unit. Upon looking inside the back of the unit on the right hand side in front of the empty drive base, you will see a black squeeze clip. Currently, this is in the lowered position. In order to raise it, you will need to squeeze the clip while simultaneously raising the entire assembly upwards. This is the track itself being raised and will provide a bit of resistance as it is spring loaded. Once you have the track raised as far as it will go, while still keeping upward pressure to hold the track, release the top half of the squeeze clip. This will lock the track into place in the upward position. You can now release the upward pressure and the track should stay. The last thing you will do in the back of the library is to undo the thumb screws holding the control unit to the expansion below it. These thumb screws are located just under the bottom most tape drive bay. Undo both thumb screws for the control unit. You are now ready to move to the front of the library. In order to access the picker tracks in the front of the control unit, you will need to open the main access door, if you have not already done so when removing the picker. You will see the same type of black squeeze clip to the left of the main opening in the front of the control unit. Using the same method as before, raise the track so that it is locked in place. Now you are ready to undo the thumb screws that are holding the front of the control unit to the expansion below it. They are located at the bottom of the control unit, below the main opening, and can only be accessed while the main access door is open. Undo both thumb screws for the control unit. Once this is complete, you will be able to remove the control unit from the expansions below it. Lift the control unit off the expansions and put it to the side out of your way. Now that you have removed the defective control unit, you will replace it with the good one and then reinstall the picker. First, put the replacement control unit into place, making sure that it clicks in and is flush with the rest of the front of the library. Once it is sitting properly, tighten down the thumb screws in the front and back, securing the control unit to the expansion below it. Then, drop picker tracks down both front and back. Now you are ready to reinstall the picker. To install the picker, first connect the picker cable to the rear connector of the picker. Then, carefully line up the front and back wheels with the guide channels going down the tracks. Lower the picker carefully, ensuring that it is level front to back. To be sure this is the case, Compare the positioning of the topmost wheel of the picker assembly with the top edge of the track, both front and rear. What you want is for the top edge of the wheel to be even with the top edge of the track for both front and back tracks simultaneously. If one wheel is either a bit above or a bit below the edge of the track, you will need to pull the picker out and try again. This may take a few attempts, even for those experienced in replacing these assemblies. Please don't get discouraged. Just take your time. Now, reinstall all expansions above the control unit using the same procedure you did for the control unit, first securing the thumb screws and then dropping down the picker tracks, this time doing the lowest expansion first and working your way up. You are now ready to get the library unit back into the rack. For safety reasons, please use either a server lift or multiple people to help lift the unit back into the rack. Once the unit is back in the rack, please secure it using the four screws and rack mount kit. Now, install all tape drives and or drive bay filler plates in their respective positions. Install the terminators and interconnect cables, being sure that they are clipped and secure and you do not bend the pins when installing them. Last, install all cables that you removed prior to working on the library. Flip all power supplies to the on position and then go around to the front of the library and press the power button and wait for the library to initialize. While the library is initializing, you will see the initial setup wizard. Please complete this wizard using the parameters the administrator took from the old control unit prior to removing it. Then you must make sure that the library comes up clean without any errors. If there is an amber light below the operator panel after the library initializes, you will need to log in as an administrator and examine if they are related to the work that was just performed and clear them. If you have any questions in regards to examining and clearing RAS tickets, please see the link in the description below for our video about ML6000 RAS tickets. If you are having any difficulties after this, please open up a support ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. It will now be the responsibility of the administrator to set up the library settings from scratch. 
using information they saved from the web GUI prior to powering off the original defective control unit. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA Video Production Team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.